welcome all those that are joining us, us online. I think I think we've got uh, 300 or so followers, that, and we appreciate all those that are following our, our uh, services and so forth, and and the numbers that are viewing our services. It's such a privilege to have each one to come and to be a part uh, through our online presence there. And we appreciate that so very much, and I pray that God will bless you and continue to do so. And uh, we're gathered here, uh, here at Austin Grove here this morning uh, with the only purpose, and that is to worship and praise our Lord. So uh, let's, together, we want to sing praises and worship our Lord this day here. And I'll let's turn it over to you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sin like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song
just be seated for a moment. Let's have our prayer time if we may. Uh, we always want to be conscious of uh, the needs here in our community of individuals that stand in need of our prayers. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Miss Shirley's uh, uh, brother passed away. Ask that you would remember the Parker family. Please keep uh, that family in your prayers. We've got several that are having surgery. Carson will be having surgery on the 18th. Bill Fowler will be having surgery on the 10th. Uh, Bailey, uh, we want to remember Bailey. Keep her in our prayers also and the family there too. Uh, Mr. Earl, he's uh, continue, uh, he is much better. I ask that you continue to remember him. Janice was in the service, the, the first service here this morning. We're so grateful for that. Uh, uh, please remember each of these that are in our nursing facilities, those that uh, that are homebound, and we've got uh, a number of those. Please keep them in our prayers. We've got a whole list here. Uh, every person is equally important to us. Every person stands in need of the healing power and the touch of our Heavenly Father. And let me encourage you to, to pray with us and for every person here. God knows who we are. I had, uh, as you know, we've done for years, we've uh, given you an opportunity to simply by an outstretched hand uh, to, uh, uh, in an unspoken way, maybe you have needs, or maybe you have a neighbor, a friend, or a co-worker, or maybe for yourself, or maybe there's a circumstance or a situation or something that you or your family is experiencing right now. And uh, we count it a privilege to stand alongside of each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And those that are online, if you've got prayer needs, uh, folks, we want to pray with and for you. And I'll promise you that our God uh, cannot be confined here in, with mortar and bricks uh, in a building. And God's much greater than that. And uh, so certainly, indeed, we want to pray uh, for, for one another here. Anyone else we need to add before we continue on with our prayer time? Anybody else got a, a special need? Or someone? Sister Violet had a stroke this week. Sue's sister Violet had a stroke. Okay, let's remember her. Anybody else? Yes. March 28th, Thomas does. Keep him in your prayers. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else at all? It is a privilege to pray for one another. I promise you, God hears every prayer. You've got an unspoken prayer need. Slip up your hand. You're at home. I hope that you'll just lift your hand at home, wherever you're sitting. If you're in your living room, maybe you're in your car. You just want to lift your hand. And God does, boys and girls, does God not? He, he, he knows when we when we are praying to him, doesn't he? And he wants us to do that. I hope that you're praying every day, okay? You pray before you go to sleep, okay? Will you do that for me? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to continue our service in song, if we may. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have of meeting together uh, here within the confines of this, your house. But also, Father, I thank you for all those that are joining us online. And Lord, I thank you for their faithfulness. I thank you for the ministry of being able to reach out not only in our area, but all over, and to be able to uh, proclaim Jesus uh, in a number of places and with a number of families. Thank you, Lord, for all uh, our young adults and for our boys and girls as they are uh, are leading us here today in our worship time. Lord, I thank you for the uh, praises that we have already sang, but the ones that we're going to be singing here shortly. Lord, I pray for every person on our prayer list, those that have been mentioned, those others in which that stand in need of our prayers. We've got a number of folks that are, uh, that, uh, are having surgery in the next few weeks. Lord, will you touch each one? I know you're the master physician. Will you heal in accordance? And every person on our prayer list, we have those that are on our prayer list that stand in need of transplants. Uh, they're awaiting a match. We pray that that's going to happen real soon and that they're going to be able to get that necessary transplants. For those that are, that are still under doctor's care, and we've got a number of folks that are, that are under doctor's care on this prayer list. They stand in need, Father, of your presence in their life this day. Lord, I look out across this service, but also the first service, and almost every hand was outstretched toward heaven and said, Lord, will you just intervene on, uh, on my behalf or the behalf of somebody that I love and care about? 
today. Lord, we look forward to hearing from heaven this week in regard to every prayer that has been asked for. Even though knowing full well, Father, that part of our prayer must be, Lord, thine will be done. Lord, we ask that whatever your will is in every situation, that your spirit and your presence might just abound in each person's life. Lord, hear our prayers. Help us, Father, here this morning to open our hearts, our minds, our souls. Help us to open up to you, Father, that we've come here today to, to offer prayers, petitions, sing praises to you, open up your word and allow your Holy Spirit to bring it to life for us. And Lord, if there are decisions that need to be made, whether it's here in this building, in this service, or whether it's a, that we make it at home, or wherever we might, life may find us at this particular time. Lord, will you touch? And Lord, we invite and we come with open hearts and open arms this day to worship you with all of our being. So Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for listening to us and for being with us and for your leadership and your guidance every step of the way in our lives. Lord, we thank you for that. So Lord, this day, may we give glory and honor and praise to you as we continue this worship time. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. If y'all would stand, we're going to sing Blessed Assurance. It's going to come up on the monitor.
thank you. Be seated. Mr. Aaron has a special message for our boys and girls. If you'd like to come up at this time. Parents, if you need to come with them, feel free to do so. How are y'all? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> we got one going. Hold on a second. I'm not sure if they're coming or not. Come on back down here. We're not finished yet with the clock. <laughs> We all take a wrong turn every now and then, don't we? How are y'all? Good. Who here likes to laugh and be happy? Me. Me? You know, what makes you laugh sometimes? What makes you happy? Funny things. Funny things. So who can tell me a joke that's really funny? <laughs> Well, a dog on a bike would be pretty funny. You can tell me a joke. What is it? How did the TV cross the road? How did it cross the road? Oh, it rode a bike. That's a good. That's a good. Can you tell me one too? A chair, man, y'all are, y'all making me happy and laughing this morning. So what are, what do you know? This will be the last one. What do you know? Knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Jinx. Oh, that's it. <laughs> y'all are pretty good. So what are some things, do you think God likes to smile at us and be happy with us? Yeah. So what are some things we can do? You think God was smiling while Eli was playing the piano this morning? He was. He did a really good job. So what are some other things that we can do to make Jesus smile? Um, be happy. Be happy, yeah. What's that? That's right. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Those are all really good. So, yep, yeah, that's right. So well, you got one more? That is right. So they all have great ideas. So we're going to try to do one thing this week to make Jesus smile and make him happy, okay? And then we're going to pray, and then you can get your papers after we get done out of the choir, all right? Okay. All right. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for what you've given us. Thank you for all the opportunities that we have just to, to make you happy. Let us all try this week to, to make you happy and smile, and let's do one thing for each other to... Show your love to others. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, let's go back and finish singing first. Let's finish singing first. We'll come down and finish. Let's just sing first. Okay, you're not singing here, Jay. Are you singing? Okay, we'll be up here singing. And these are jokes you can uh, you can tell in church that we have just had. Yeah. And that is right there a lot quieter when their mamas are sitting right behind them.
got your Bible, let me invite you to turn to the first Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. We're going to can kind of do a little continuation here as our boys and girls go. Did you notice how many boys we had up here? Uh, and I think, my understanding, I believe there's four more boys on the way here that are going to be born pretty soon. Uh, we, listen, listen, guys, we need some girls here uh, too. So, but uh, turn with me to first Thessalonians, the uh, fifth chapter, if you would, here. I had the privilege there. We were in Murphy, North Carolina, uh, for Tyler's wedding uh, yes, over the weekend, and we came back late last night. Uh, uh, you never know who you're going to meet. Small world. Uh, I met a gentleman that was, uh, they had an antique car that they were going to go off in a, I think a 50-something uh, Rolls Royce they had that was there, and he brought it. Nice-looking vehicle. And, uh, and that... Uh, uh, the gentleman there, he said, uh, said I got something, preacher. I need you to, I need to tell you about. And I said, what is it? And I introduced myself. He introduced himself, and he had a nice Union County name of Lynn Green. And I know several Lynns here in the county, but not him. And he he has family here in Union County. He has Union County roots. He gave me his phone number, and he he said, I need to share with you something. He's got a, a 48 year old uh, son-in-law. Uh, never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He had been talking with him, witnessing to him for a number of years. And seemingly, he just never would give over and receive Christ as Lord and Savior. But he said, last week, he said everything changed. This young man, he had a friend of his and up there, I think uh, that uh, when it's fishing season, trout season, I think they, they, they go trout fishing. They close everything up and go trout fishing. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? It's kind of a little different lifestyle. And uh, so uh, a buddy of his took him trout fishing, and they were scattered out. This young man by himself, the other friend of his upstream. And uh, the young man had been to church the past Wednesday night, the past Sunday, He'd heard the messages of Christ many times before. And he came back and he told his father-in-law, everything's changed. He said, what do you mean? He said, I got down on my knees with my waders on, even though I got water in them from the stream. And the cold water was there. And he said, I received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior at, 40, at 47 years old. Amen. Folks, you don't see that very often, do you? It's hard when you begin to see an individual that they have been told the message, but somehow or another they didn't get it. And finally, when the Holy Spirit began to convict this, this man, he said, I couldn't wait. I just had to get down on my knees and invite Jesus Christ to come in my heart and life. His family is going to be different from that point forward, and it is. He was so excited. He said, I've got to tell somebody about it. He's telling them today in church. And uh, but there's nothing sweeter. I, I think I put the title of the message here today, uh, here in the bulletin, Life in Jesus. Nothing sweeter. Nothing sweeter than knowing Christ as Lord and Savior. Nothing sweeter than, than being able to sing praises to the Lord. And thank you, young people, for having your children and being there and, and singing alongside of them about Christ. Folks, that's precious. That's the things that Jesus, as Jesus had line after line of children coming to sit on his lap and for him to bless them. And the disciples and others said, Jesus, you're tired. You're weary. You've, you've been doing, you've been working, you've been all day walking and talking to people. Let's just send them away. You know what Jesus said? He said, you bid the children come. Don't turn them away. Jesus Christ 
is not ever going to turn you away, folks. Jesus Christ is not going to turn you away. If you'll come to him and come to him in the right heart, spirit, soul. I challenge each of us, I challenge the first service. We come here with open hearts into God's house today. We come seeking to hear his message. We come to sing praises. We come to offer prayers. But we come with our hearts open seeking for God to look in the very depth of our being. And if there be sin in our lives, and folks, every one of us are sinners. Every one of us. Paul would even use that term. He said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. And Jesus Christ he stands ready to forgive us of all unrighteousness and to give us that new beginning, that new start. What a great, marvelous, and mighty God that we serve today, folks. Not, not that we're going to serve in the future, but we're going to serve Him today and all the days of our life because nothing's sweeter than being close to Jesus Christ. Nothing at all is sweeter. Look with me here if you have your Bible. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. We're gonna let's begin reading here. Uh, let's see. Let's read with uh, let's begin reading with verse fourteen, if we may. Here, now we exhort thee, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient. Toward how many men? All men. Be patient through all people. You and I. As Christians, and most of us here know Christ as Lord and Savior. What a blessing it is to know that, that we know Christ. We, we, don't have to, we do not have to be concerned about eternity because we know Christ has given us eternal life. We all encounter individuals, maybe family, maybe friends, or it may be a stranger that God brings us across our paths. We have a privilege that God has afforded us as he brings folks across the paths of our life. We have a privilege, and I pray and I challenge each of us here this morning that we're going to take advantage of the opportunities that God avails to us to share Christ. You say, preacher, I'm not good at that. I promise you that God will never ask any of us to do anything that he's not already given us what it takes to accomplish what he's seeking for us to do. And you and I stand and live and die on that promise that God, he, he knows us better than anybody else knows us. He knows us better than even mama and daddy and grandpa and grandma know us. I'll promise you. He knows every portion about us and get this, folks, he still loves us. He still loves us. What a great God you and I serve. What it, what it is to be able to walk close to Christ, how precious it is to be able to do that. And look, it's Paul's writing to early believers, and he's tell, telling them, as you see people that are really, they're really not obeying God's word. Look at me just a little bit further here in verse 14. I want you to exhort or, or to challenge or to talk to them. And I want you to warn them that you've got to do things Christ's way. We've got to do things by the, what the Word of God says that this is appropriate and this is right in God's eyes. So you need to, to be able to talk to somebody, to tell them about not only who Jesus is, but what Jesus is desiring for their lives. Jesus is desiring to bless us and to take care of us, but yet so many times, Paul uses that term, those that are unruly. You ever been a little unruly in your life? Now I see some of you smiling. Yeah, I, I will guarantee you that there's been a little bit of unruliness. I hope it's been a small amount in all of our lives. 
that there have been a lot of times that we could have been a whole lot better. Uh, maybe we've caused a lot of gray hairs in our parents' or grandparents' uh, heads, or maybe they've even lost hair because of our unruliness. Paul's writing, he said to the early believer, those that are unruly, and he said, comfort those that stand in need of comfort. He uses that term feeble-minded. There's a little bit of that in every one of us too. But also, I love that terminology of what he uses in the next phrase. He said, I want you to support those that really need, need our help. We all have a, no people or individuals, or maybe we've been there, done that, where that somebody just needs a little bit of pick-me-up. Pick I'm grateful that God sees and he brings people across our paths that we can give that pick-me-up to them. One of the greatest things here, I, I think of, of several <laughs> ministries that we have, we have the, the couple food ministries and clothing ministries and things that we are incorporating and, and able to do right here in our community to give to those that stand in need of a little bit of help. What a blessing it is. And, you know, is that what Jesus would have us do? Absolutely. He'd have us to help in any way that we possibly can. Paul's writing to them. He says, there are some unruly characters in your bunch. You need to talk to them about it. There are those that really aren't thinking exactly the way they really ought to be thinking. You need to encourage them. You need to be there for you're not standing there in condemnation, but you're standing there in support and help and trying to lead and guide and direct them in the right path. Isn't that a wonderful thing about us as church? You know the one thing about a church family is that you and I, we can rejoice together, but if need be, we can lay on one another's shoulder and we can cry. And God just takes and honors and blesses. And you know the one thing I find about, and we've encouraged every church that we've ever been privileged to pastor, that we would be interwoven together. One of the things in the wedding yesterday was a cross and being interwove. The husband, the wife, there was a third. That's God. And we saw the bride and the groom as they were intertwining the, the rope the rope that possibly could have been broken, not by me, but maybe by a few people in our congregation might have been strong enough to have broke that, that one strand. But they interwoven, and once it was woven together, I dare say there's probably not a single one of us that could have broken that. You see what that symbolizing is that let Jesus into your life. Let Jesus come in and walk with him and let and, and stand alongside of him as you and I are on this journey we call life. Help one another when you can. When you have the opportunity to do. Not with condemnation, but with love. When we think about what would Jesus have us to do. And then not, not only look at the last phrase here in verse 14. He said, I want you to be patient. And I asked you the question a little while ago toward all men and women. Oh, to, the, to their families, be patient. Easy to do? No. The right thing to do? Yes. It's the right thing that you and I would do, would be patient with one another and be there for each other. Look with me at verse 15 as we, as we continue on. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Old Testament law. Eye for an eye, tooth for two. We understood that. We still understand that. We think that's the way to go. Look at what Paul's writing. Be influenced and led by the Holy Spirit. Let me reread verse 15 just a moment. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Do good by people. You and I want to do things in the name of Jesus Christ. Do that which is right. That which is appropriate in the eyes, not of myself, not of the world, but do so in what is right in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. For He knows what is right and He knows what is wrong. We like to blur the lines throughout our society and our world is so good at it. Our world is so good at blurring the lines of what's right and what's wrong. It brings great fear and anxiety 
to all of us when we begin to see generations begin to come up that are not being taught in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and getting a foundation that is laid to where they will know and be able to distinguish that which is godly and that which is ungodly. It's so important, folks, and we can never, ever leave that out. Look with me as we continue reading a little bit here. He says, but ever follow that which is good. Be sure that you're following what Jesus Christ is having for each of us to do. Follow that which Christ is talking to us about. Look now as, as he continues on. Look what he says. Both among ourselves, but also, once again, we see to all men and women. He's all inclusive of everyone. It's never a right time to do the wrong thing. Yeah, that's so true. But yet, so many times what the world wants to tell us, it will not hurt. It won't hurt. Do it. God will forgive you. But you know what we, don't, what we fail to realize is going to hurt not only ourselves when we take that wrong path. It's going to hurt those that, are, that we love and cherish that are closest to us. But also it's going to hurt our witness in Jesus Christ. You have friends and neighbors and relatives that do not know Christ as Lord and Savior of his or her life. And if we are damaging our witness by allowing the world to dictate to us or to call the shots in yours and my life, folks, we're treading some pretty, pretty serious, very serious territory, but we're treading some situations in which it can be very painstakingly that will carry over a long way in our lives. And sometimes it even spreads from generation to generation. And I think we've seen a lot of that in my lifetime. And we want to see that we're doing that which is according to what God's Word says and that we're teaching and helping to lay a foundation in our little one's lives but also in our, our lives too as adults. I don't want to ever stop learning. I don't want to ever stop being able to read a passage of God's Word and be able to see where the Holy Spirit may impart a deeper meaning and a clearer meaning to me. And an application of it that, that is going to make me serve the Lord to a deeper degree than I've, than I've ever done it before. I want to get closer to Jesus with every day that passes by my life. I want to be stronger in the Lord as every day passes by. I want to lift Christ up in my life. I want to walk daily with, with Jesus Christ in the way that pleases Him. Look with me a little further here. Let's go a little bit further and let's look. Look here as we see. Look at verse 15, uh, 16. We've, uh, we've gone over this here in the last three or four months a little bit here. I want to kind of hit a few high points here. I want you to continue to rejoice evermore. How are you going to rejoice if you're in, in that place that you know that, that there are wrong things that are happening in your life or that you're participating in life? That's not in accordance with God's will. It's pretty tough to rejoice when you're in the middle of something like that. It's pretty tough to find the joy that Christ really desires for every heart and life and soul. And he desires that for us. He wants you and I to have joy. He wants you and I to have peace. He wants you and I to walk closer and closer to him. But if we're walking closer to the world than we're walking closer to Christ, folks, we're going to have an awful hard time. And God's going to have a hard time imparting the wisdom to us of how to live and how to direct our paths and how to be a witness as he brings folks across our paths and, and rest assuredly he's bringing people across every one of our paths and he said, how serious are you about following me? How serious are you? So he's saying, I want you to rejoice evermore. I want you to continue to pray. Paul writes, he says, never ceasing. 
Always continue to pray. That's one of the things here I was saying to the boys and girls here. I hope that they're praying. Parents, grandparents, encourage your, your grandchildren or your children to pray. A habit you'll never regret of teaching your children how important it is to talk to the Father. Talk to Jesus. And Jesus has the message of joy and fulfillment in life that will carry them not just through their life, but from generation to generation. Folks, that's a blessing. When we see where the, the Holy Spirit can help us to influence generation after generation, and we're seeing that, and it can happen. But look at out verse 18, if you would, as we continue reading a little, for a little bit. In everything, everything you give thanks. Had, had a, uh, in one of the churches we pastored, I had a, uh, an older lady, sweet as can be, that uh, she said, Preacher, how can I give thanks in everything in my life? Because there's a lot of stuff that I don't, I don't really, it's tough for me to go through. But yet, Holy Spirit here in Paul's writing said, I want you to give thanks in everything. But you know what we're finding, and we, this is one of the conversations that led us down that, down that road, was that even in the midst of something that we think is so uh, strength zapping that it's taken away from us, you know what I found in life? When I go through the struggles or the, uh, the times that, that I'm having some issues, when I get to the other side and I get out of, you know what I found? I'm a whole lot stronger. Now, is that just because of Leon's strength? No. It's of God's strength because God is teaching you and I and showing us that as you go down that road that's pretty difficult and it's long and bumpy and sometimes it's got some detours along the way and when I get through that, I'm going to be a stronger believer. I'm going to be closer to the Lord and God's going to help me to get where I need to be in, the right, in, a, in a correct relationship with Him. Look with me a little further here as we continue reading. Give thanks in everything, for this is, this is, what, this is what the Scripture is saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying. This is the will of God. God is saying, this is what I desire for every one of us to do. Give thanks to God in every facet of your life. The good, the bad, and sometimes that which is not so attractive at all. And, may, and maybe that sheds a... A, a difficult light on us, but we give God the glory and praise and because this is the will of God and let God have control. And I'll promise you God will change things in your life and it'll be a total and complete transition. I gave you the illustration a little bit ago of the, of the man's son-in-law. He received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What a blessing. We rejoice with his family that he has come to know Christ. His life is forever changed. This is the will of God, that our lives would be changed and that no more would we seek to do the will of the world, but we seek to deal, do the will of God in Jesus Christ. And look at the last two words here in verse 18. He says here, concerning you and I. Concerning us. Do these things that are part of what you're going through in life God knows the things and what we're experiencing, and he knows that sometimes we need that pick-me-up. And it's not an energy drink. It's not even a sun drop that'll carry you through that, folks. We need Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer, folks. Nothing else. Jesus Christ is the answer for what ails us. Jesus Christ is the answer for this world, for the situations and circumstances. And I hope you're praying for the people of Ukraine and all those others and this society. And this has been much more far-reaching than what any of us could ever imagine. And I'm not sure we're finished with it yet. I think it's going to be ongoing for a while. Pray for our leaders. Pray for, for our nation. Pray for our enemies. 
Pray for those that are in the midst of such a, a time in which they never could have imagined. What do they need? They need Jesus Christ. They need His strength. They need His presence. They need to be able to find joy and strength to continue on with the situation and circumstances. Look at the next verse here in verse 19. I know our time's getting away. Look at verse 19. Be careful that you're not quenching the Spirit of God. You know, if we're not careful, what we allow to happen is that we're going to simply, we're going to override what God's will is for each of our lives. Now you say, how in the world can I do that? I can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with God. No, but you know what? God's not going to force himself up on, uh, on any of us in any situation. He wants you and I to willingly accept him and love him enough and trust the Lord enough that we are allowing him to, and we're asking him to come and be a part of my life. Believe it or not, I was in a, in a youth or children's choir at our church growing up. And we sang a, sang a hymn, and sometimes we say, every day with Jesus is what? Some of you, it's sweeter than the day before. Hey, I'm just foolish enough to believe that. That if I can keep Jesus in my life, and I can keep things where it needs to be, my day's going to be a whole lot sweeter than it could have been. Because Jesus Christ brings that to the table to us. But you and I have got to open up. Be sure that you're not, you're not pushing the Spirit of God away and saying, God, I got this, forget it. I got it. You will regret ever uttering those words to God if you say, God, I don't need you today. This is a give me, I've got it. Very poor choice of your wording. I need you, Lord, every day. Be careful that you're not quenching the Spirit of God. Be careful here. I'm going to skip over just a little bit. Let me skip just a little ways down here. Look what he says here. Look at verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you. You know, we try to be as faithful as we can to one another, and we try to live up to any promise or commitment that we make one to another but you know promise as much as we try to keep it there are going to be times in which that we're going to fail one another our heavenly father Paul's writing he's saying God's faithful God is good God loves you God is in the midst of whatever you're going through. He's right there with you. You don't have to be so concerned that you're alone. And there are many of us, we're satisfied. We shortchange ourselves so many times because we try to walk this, this road of life alone. And we think, well, I can do it. And this is my life and I'm going to run it. And God will stand by and he'll be very patient and he'll wait. And there'll be a time in your life that you'll utter the name of Jesus. And he'll be there for you. He'll be right there for you. But you've got to open up your heart. That's why I say, when we enter God's house this morning, or if you're online with us here, I hope that you've entered this service with an open heart, open mind but also the very deepest part within your soul you've opened up. Lord, I want, I want what you have to say to me today. Look with me very quickly as we continue on just, just for a few more moments. Faithful is he that calleth you. But look at the last phrase in this verse. Who also will do it. Not only did Paul write to the early believer and say, God's faithful, but God also is able and is willing and will accomplish that which he is desiring to accomplish in your life if you'll let him. You know, we like that, don't we? We like the point that God gets involved with us. We like that person that not, not only will just tell us about how to do something, but he's right there with us leading us. If you do not know how to do something nowadays, and probably most of you here, uh, I know I have a time or so, and, and uh, uh, 
Cindy's car, she'll need to reset the computer or do something there, and she'll look on YouTube and, and said, I got it. She'll come back in the house and say, I got it. She watched somebody, everybody, there's some video that's going to show you almost everything about how to do whatever you have, you're stuck against. I wish we could approach the throne of God in such a manner there that we'd punch into God and say, Lord Jesus Christ, show me how I need to live. Show me how I need to be directed. Show me how I need to be love, loving people. Show me how I need to be patient. Show me how I need to reach out, reach out and let your Holy Spirit help those that are in need. Show me, Father, because, listen, I think God's got something a whole lot better than YouTube. I think God's got something a whole lot better than, than uh, Facebook. I think God's got the answer for what ails us and the issues that we're encountering on a day-in, day-out basis. And God says, I hold the solution. I hold the key for you. But you know what he's waiting on? He's waiting on you and I to say yes to him. Most of us here this morning, we are children of the Lord. Praise God for that. But also know that even as a child of God, there are going to be struggles that all of us are going to encounter day in and day out. And God stands ready. He says, not only am I going to show you how to live, but I'm going to be there living it with you and walking with you. That's a loving God, folks. And Jesus loves us. He cares for us so much. Jesus loves these children that are being born in Ukraine. And all across this world. And the mothers that are going through such a struggle today. Lift them up to the, to the Lord. Because that's all we can do at this point. But I'll promise you that God's enough. And that He loves them. And He loves each of us. Are you here today as a child of God? Have you said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ to be the governing force and ruling force in your life. Hey, preacher, you've asked too tough, tough of a question. Pretty, it's a pretty tough question. It's one I can't answer for you. It's something you can only answer for yourself. Mom and Daddy can't answer for you. Only you. Is He Lord of your life? How serious have we gotten with God? Folks, this is the most important decision we can ever make. Sometimes we think the world tells us the most important decision is a purchase that maybe we make in a home. Folks, as pretty as the homes we may buy and we may live in for 100 years or a little less, if we're blessed, I got a better home waiting for me in heaven. You're a child of God. You've got a better home waiting for you, folks. And if you've been living according to what God's Word says, you know what you've done? You're building up equity in heaven. You're doing what Jesus said, where we ought to store our treasures. Don't put your faith and trust in the bank and anywhere else. You put your faith and trust in the Lord. You do good by people. This is what Paul was writing to the early church. He said, I want you to hear my word. I want you to hear what God says. Thus saith the Lord that the Lord says, this is how you live. This is how you treat people. This is how you interact one with another. This is how you live. We live to support and to help one another down this road of life. But also, as we journey down that road, for those that do not have Christ in their life, I know that their future is bleak. They have no future because their future is, is without God. With Jesus. We can have it all, folks. Without Him. I used that terminology in the wedding yesterday. Without Him, you'll have nothing. We choose. What are we going to do with Jesus Christ this morning? If you're here this morning, as a believer, you need to rededicate or recommit your life. I'll be here to talk with you. You may not need to say a single thing, but just bow down at this His altar. Will you come here this morning just as you are? You may not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Will you come? Any decision that you need to make to right your ship of your life, 
That's what Jesus stands ready to do. To give you a new direction, a new calling, but you got to do it. Let's stand together. We're going to sing a hymn invitation. Baxter, if you would, play. does teach us how to live, how to interact one with another. Will you come? How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone How about it folks, it's your chains gone? Have you been set free this morning? If you have, let's praise the, let's praise the Lord. Nothing sweeter than to walk with Jesus Christ. Will you come this morning? His mercy reigns. Unending love. Amazing grace. As Baxter turns the music down, just let it play a little bit. Just bow with me. Heavenly Father, the Lord your grace sets us free. It's something we have a hard time sometimes defining. But yet we know when your grace is poured out into our lives. Father, what a difference it makes. What a freedom that it grants to us. When we have the weight of sin lifted off on us, I'm free and I'm able to, to do that which you called me to do with, with joy, excitement, with energy, with strength, like nothing else. It comes from your holy throne, Father. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for our brothers and sisters. Each person that's gathered here, each person who's at the Sunday school hour and those in our first service. Lord, thank you. Thank you for our church family. How, Father, you bring us together as one in you. And, Father, we're strong because of each other. But more importantly, we're stronger because of you. Lord, help us to be the church that we need to be. And also the person that we need to be. Not in the world's eyes or not in our own eyes, but Father, the in your eyes. Mold us, shape us, that we might carry out your will as we journey down this road of life. So thank you, Lord, this day for the wisdom and the strength of your word and the power that's found therein. As we go our separate ways now, put that hedge of protection around us. Keep us safe. And bring us back next morning time here this your house. For we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We have a wonderful remainder of the day. Enjoy this beautiful weather that the Lord has seen fit to send to us. I think cold weather's back next week at the long range forecast says so. See you next next time. God bless. <laughs>